Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Valencia in a top of the table clash before taking on Lask in the final Europa League group stage game of the season thus far before we head into a knockout because of course we have qualified from our group already. First things first though, would love it if you could drop a like on today's video for me and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notification bells turned on and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. So jumping straight into things, since you guys were last here for the 3-3 uh, three -three draw with Chelsea and the 3-1 win over Real Valladolid, uh, it's been a little iffy since then. The rest of October was not great for us. A 2-2 draw with Villarreal was not really ideal and a 3-3 draw with Huesca was far from ideal but the 4-1 victory against Mallorca was very handy in there but obviously dropped a lot of points in October with draws against teams that we shouldn't have drawn against really. November was a lot better for us though. In the return leg against Chelsea we managed to beat them 2-0 in the group stages there so great result for us to win the game and get ourselves on top of the group. We then had a very unfortunate 2-1 loss to Levante. Our second loss of the season was very unfortunate to lose that one. Uh, we didn't really play very well if I'm honest with you. We missed a penalty in that game as well which didn't really help out too much but it's one of those things right. But since then we have been pretty dominant. A 4-1 victory over Real Sociedad, a 6-2 victory against Carabag, a 3-2 victory against Real Madrid which is absolutely exquisite and then a 1-0 victory over Real Betis. The 3-2 victory over Real Madrid is exquisite because we scored three goals from uh, four shots which is just mental. It's one of those games right where we got very very lucky and of course as you can see there we scored two goals in the 90th minute courtesy of Juan Morales' hat trick so very lucky in that game and uh, it was a bit of an FMing really wasn't it that one but we'll take those results definitely. What that means for the league table is that we currently Currently sit second on 36 points, two points behind Real Madrid who have slipped up in between episodes a little bit. Um, I guess we have as well with a couple of draws and a loss in there as well, but not quite so much as Real Madrid who at one point were eight points clear at the top. We are only one point clear of today's opponents Valencia, so that's going to be a very tricky game coming up. But we are five points clear of Atletico and Sevilla and a long way clear of Barcelona as well. So let's keep this up and hopefully we'll see ourselves finish maybe top of the pile come the end of the season. In terms of Europa League though, we are qualified from our group in Q1, so we go straight through to the second knockout round, which is fantastic on the grounds that we've got a better head-to-head -head record against Chelsea. Even if we lose to last today and Chelsea beat Carabag, they can't go ahead of us. So beautiful. So heading into today's first game against Valencia, we're going to go bold and brave with the 4-2-2-2, I guess is what we're going to call it, um, because I think our strikers are in good form, everyone's playing well, I think it'll work out all right. So I'm going to go for it. We've got Krenta in goal with Varel, Araya and Rubens and Rask in the back line. Marat and Noak in that midfield with Terziev and Paolo Turner on the wings and Sione and Morelis leading the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today, there will be goals in this game. I'm just not entirely sure where the goals will be going. Hopefully to us as Rubens looks to come forward here as we play away from home against Valencia. So it's very bold playing this very attacking strategy away from home against the Valencia side who are really good but Morelos on the ball right now shoots shot blocked by the keeper and cleared away by Valencia a nice early chance for us there to show our danger. Real Madrid are already winning their game at 1-0 so we can't overtake them as things stand right now but we need to keep the pressure on them as Rask now puts the ball into the middle and Morelos puts it in the back of the net for his 24th goal of the season and what's this? My phone is buzzing. What's it telling me? That's right, it's the one football app telling me that Morelis has scored in the 17th minute of the game against Valencia. Of course, today's video is sponsored by the one football app, the best app out there to keep up to date with all of the latest footballing news, scores and live updates. Follow your favourite teams and get push notifications sent straight through to your phone to keep you up to date with everything going on in the games that matter to you. So we massively appreciate it if you could download the app from the top line of the description for absolutely free. It's a lovely work goal to be fair, some lovely one-touch football before Rask puts the ball across into Morelis. And Morelis in off the post by the looks of things actually, it's a great goal there, but 1-0 up. So Real Madrid are currently 2-0 up against Elche, so we're not going to catch them up today. But obviously us winning this game is really crucial as a statement of intent to try and win the league title. Now our new centre-back uh, Weber is not playing today because he's just come back from an injury. But I think he has made a huge impact and contribution to us actually doing really well and being in the position right now he's really helped strengthen that defense so for me Rubens at uh, Rubens Rubens is very good of course the young center back that we've got um but coming into the team what's it I literally said his name a second ago why is I, why have I suddenly gone blank 
on our new sense of Weber, that's the one. I don't know why that <laughs> disappeared from my head then as Morelles scores a fantastic chip there right before half time to go 2 0 up. Great interception there from Nowak, I must say, as he gets the ball forward into Morelles. A great pass to him. Morelles, absolutely sublime finishing from him. Before this, he'd only scored like eight goals in a season. He's now up to 25 for the season. And I think the service that everyone provides the advanced forward in our squad is superb. Obviously, Sione's played advanced forward for us the past two seasons, but it's made more sense to put Morelis there on the ground. It's got like 18 finishing. And Sione now not scoring the goal. He's more of the provider, more of the person that is involved in the build-up towards goals. And it's actually Morelis now scoring the goal. So I guess Sione should have scored there but he might be more disappointed that he's not scoring as many goals now he's not quite getting the recognition that he once had and Gisk well Gisk is more of a bench man now he's not very happy either he got a good 20-30 goals or so the other season and uh, is now not getting many at all and to the point where we may look to move him on so we can start to bring through players like Thad Davis Another chance for us, though, hopefully, with 25 or 35 minutes or so to go in this game. Uh, Varel coming forward, loses possession, though, and Valencia have still got plenty of time to get themselves back in this game. Pedri mm, doesn't quite lose possession, but their other player does lose possession. As Paolo Turner now with a chance. Can we make it three? No, because Pedri comes back and recovers the ball nicely. If we had made it three, that probably would have been game over. But in the meantime, it is Valencia looking to come forward again. And Valencia, Varel making another mistake and Krenta makes another great save. I've got to say Krenta has been on top form today. Without him, the scoreline could be very different. And Sione now on the ball playing as the advance forward. Gets a shot on target, but it's straight at the keeper, unfortunately. But Sione, I want to see a goal from him before the game is finished to make sure that we know he's still a goal scorer. We're still giving him plenty of attention and we still love him as a player. Although the ball forward there is not magnificent. So we do lose out on possession with 20 or so minutes to go. This Valencia side, I, did, I can't believe how good it is. They've just brought Haaland onto the pitch. They've got Pedri as well. Uh, I believe they also had Curtis Jones at one point. They have a really, really solid team. I can't believe Haaland's playing for them. I feel like it's a new addition. I feel like he was elsewhere before that. I think it may be in Barcelona, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, Haaland has arrived this year from Barcelona for £16 million. He is, what, 33 years old now, so not quite the force he maybe once was. But Valencia bringing it back with not long to go in this game. There's one goal in it. Let's drop down to a positive mentality. Let's shout encourage and with five minutes to go will Erling Haaland turn this entire game around for Valencia this would be so frustrating if we concede right now oh, Haaland was arriving in the area Krenzer with a very 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 good stop there the highlight is not over though as we win possession we don't win possession in midfield we lose possession in the midfield and Haaland is nearly three is still through and oh, defending from us has been superb today I must say a different day this would be a different scoreline, I reckon. There is going to be a corner, though. Oh, you hate to see it. Can we clear it? We do clear it, but only as far as the end of the highlight. Brilliant. There's four minutes of added time, though, and it's going to a highlight. It's a free kick for us. Paolo Turner, direct free kick. Put it in the back of a net, please. He nearly does. That was a superb free kick. An even better save, though. We've got a couple of minutes left on the clock. The highlight continues. Come on. Let's not... Please, good, okay, good miss, good miss, that's fine. I just want to see the clock down now. You love to see it. This is a huge victory for us. Not only has this result allowed us to keep up with Real Madrid, but we're also now four points clear of third place Valencia, five points clear of Atletico, uh, and a good seven points clear of Sevilla and Barcelona, and eight points clear of Atletico, Atletico Bilbao, I should say. So really positive stuff there. That's a fantastic result for us. Up next, though, is Linza Ask in the final Europa League group stage game of the season. Of course, we are already through it as top qualifier in our group, which is fantastic. So for me, what we're going to do is play the youngsters again. A little bit of a risk, given what happened uh, a couple of episodes ago, but there's no risk to it. You know, we're already qualified first in our group. We're only losing out on half a million pounds of prize money if we don't lose. So for me, I think it's a very, a very sensible thing to do to give them some experience. So we'll stick with the current formation, but we're going to bring players like Arthur Ackland onto the pitch. I want to get Tyson Brown playing as that playmaker. I want to see, uh, well, I, I would say one fit the lap, but he's currently not very happy or, or fit, I should say. In fact, most players have just played for the under-19s. Ah, 
Well, that's an issue. They've just played within the 19s. They're all absolutely exhausted. So, um, okay, that's we're not going to do that. Arthur Atkin will play. We'll play him in goal and things like that. But everyone else has played, like Lewis Crowther's played. Everyone under 19 has played. Terrible timing from me. Right, in that case, Catania comes back on for Morat to have a game as well. Uh, Lucas Weber can make his first start for a little while as well. Uh, Lukau can come in alongside him to play game two. Tell you what, Giski get on the pitch instead of Sione as well. But other than that, we'll leave the lineup as it is. Submit the team. Let's go. So as kickoff is upon us, Lask with the first opportunity of the game. Arthur Ackland making a very comfortable save. And will the highlight continue? It looks like it will as he plays the ball short to Weber. Weber coming out forward into Catanio. Catanio now with a lot of space to run into. Plays it into Gisk instead. Gisk with a nice little ball out to Tyson Brown into Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner's shot is saved. And that was a fantastic transition from all the way from the back right to the front. Speed, efficiency. I don't know what I'm going to say, but, you know, we nearly scored two goals there. That would have been great. Another chance for us to maybe do it again right now as Varel plays the ball back into Lukau, into the very small Tyson Brown and into Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner looking to come forward, get to that wide to Rask. Rask can put a ball into the middle, which he nearly does. Paolo Turner, not Paolo Turner, Tyson Brown does it instead. And Varel puts it in the back of the net. Right, the floodgates should open now. I really do genuinely think that we are the favourites for this competition this year. Like, we are so good. We've beaten Chelsea and drawn with Chelsea. I can't really see other teams. I think Chelsea are one of the best teams in here. And if we've done better than them, I really can't see other teams being better than us. We know we can beat Levante, who have currently beaten Arsenal by the looks of things. So we know we can do better there. We're better than the Portuguese sides. Like, honestly, we are class. So... I really back us to win this competition again this season. Um, obviously, the first time around when we won it, I wasn't quite so sure. It was our first time in European football. We weren't quite sure how we stacked up against other big European teams. But for me, we are a Champions League quality team that just were very unfortunate last season not to get Champions League football again. So this should be a walk in the park. It really should be, in my opinion, as Paolo Turner comes forward. Let's make it 2-0, boys, before half-time, as Paolo Turner is not quite brought down, but does hold on to possession uh, before losing it, unfortunately. But we do win it at the back, as Tyson Brown now on the ball into Varel. Can we have some success down the left-hand side of the pitch instead? No, because that was a terrible shot. Varel has got his taste of a goal today, and now he wants more of them, clearly. He reckons himself to be a decent striker. But no, pass the ball a bit more, please, and uh, get the ball into the strikers, who actually know how to put the ball in the back of the net on a regular basis as Tyson Brown into Catania. Catania unleashes one and that's how you score a goal. Perhaps another chance for us to get another goal before half time. It would be great if we could do so as Paolo Turner in an awful lot of space drives into the area and again he just can't get his shots on target today. When he is in scoring form he is deadly but uh, sometimes he's just he's just not very accurate with his shots and puts too much power on it and puts them well wide and high of the mark. His corner there wasn't very good and at the end of that Lask have scored a goal back so actually before half time it's looking very tight I'm sure the second half will fly by though and uh, looking at the match stats we had 20 shots to their three shots right so we are hugely on top in this game we should have scored more goals than we have done and uh, Terziev is making sure that we are scoring more goals now as he gets his 12th of the season which is fantastic for him already Terziev is a weird one right because he does score goals and he does play well but his attributes have, although the weird one with him is just not developed, right? His attributes have hardly changed since he joined the club. And his potential has just gone downhill massively. Like when he came in, he was classed as a wonder kid. Uh, well, that wonder kid status is now gone. And his potential has just sort of stopped. Because he just, he just didn't develop. Like nothing happened with him. He didn't do any development or anything like that. He just kind of got to a good level. And then stayed there from like the age of like 19 years old or something like that. So he's not really hugely developed. Yes, he can play in various different positions for us, which is fantastic. And maybe that has, you know, decreased his ability to progress. Because he's always learning new positions rather than actually increasing what he already knows. I don't quite know, but he's a weird one because he's not a world beater on the face of things. But you can see there he's got 12 goals for us this season right now, which is phenomenal for a left winger. When we're playing with two strikers as Gisk gets his he's got more goals than Gisk for example and we love Gisk so that's quite impressive. Varel on the ball for us on the edge of the area puts it across to Kenneth Gisk and Kenneth Gisk 
gets another goal today, 5-1. I told you the floodgates were going to open after we scored our first goal, and I think they have done. I think five is a pretty acceptable number of goals to score against a team like Lask. And we could score more of them maybe as Rubens on the ball into Paolo Turner, across to Morelles. Morelles shoots, Morelles misses. But 31 shots today, 16 on target is very, very good going. Uh, Attacking-wise, we are absolutely superb. So no complaints there. We have shown ourselves in the Europa League to be absolutely clinical. We've got a plus 25 goal difference in the Europa League this season in the group stages, which is pretty mental. And I'm looking forward to seeing our players being the top scorers and top performers in it again. I can't wait until we lift this trophy. And I can't wait until we get knocked out in a second knockout round now after I've been talking all season about how we're going to win this. But there we go. Another goal for us. Morelis this time to round off a superb performance. So very happy with that one, obviously. Great performance from the boys. We are guaranteed through into the second knockout round now of the Europa League alongside Chelsea, who qualify alongside us. Half a million pounds for winning the game and a million pounds for coming first in the group. That is, it's two million pounds less per win in the group stage in the Champions League. The Champions League has so much money, which is crazy. And also another £173,000 for apparently just drawing some games, which is weird. If we look in the Champions League to see which teams are coming down, uh, PSV, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Tottenham, Brighton, Dinamo, uh, Zagreb, uh, Lille, Stuttgart and Young Boys are coming down. Honestly, we can beat any one of those teams easily. I can't, but we're going to win the competition this season. We're going to win the Europa League. And also, I really hope we get drawn against Lille because Lille obviously is the team of Anthony Ward, our former goalkeeper and our young protege. So I'd like to see us come up against him and then these guys would probably beat us, wouldn't they? So maybe not because he's a very good keeper. But I tell you what, let's go for it. Let's come back. It's going to be a long time in between episodes, but let's come back for that second knockout round. Let's go for it and get all the way there because why not so thank you ever so much for watching today's episode hope you guys have enjoyed it and of course drop a like on today's video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here until next time have a good one goodbye